Now before you lose your minds and go crazy down in my comments, hear me out first. Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and today we are setting up a large communal for the Nia Hatheli NC. Now, if you've been around the tarantula hobby for a while, you know that there are a few species of tarantula that can be kept communally. The most popular, of course, is the Monocentrophus balfouri or the Socotra Island Blue Baboon. They seem to do very well in communals, but they can be kind of expensive. Another popular species is the Postletheria metallica, but again, they're a little pricey, and it's a little iffy on whether they're communal or they just tolerate being in close proximity. But there is one species out there that the hobby seems to kind of be split down the middle. Some say it's not a communal species, others have had some pretty good luck with them. Now recently I recorded a podcast with Dr. Linda Rayer. She is a professor in the entomology department of Cornell University and she specializes in social spiders. During our conversation I brought up communal tarantula species. You need Neoholothelia insect. That's a communal I've always been a little cautious about. I'm glad to hear that you've been having so much success but I think there's like two or three guys that I saw on YouTube that tried to keep him communally and it went bad and they ended up separating him back out and like lost half of them. But I saw when I was in Virginia Beach, Tanya was having a lot of success with, with her communal there. They came for me. I have enough to populate the U.S. with the whole <laughs> right now. I might have to hit you up because I think I've only got one right now. One little individual hanging out. And seriously, if you want NC, I got NC. Uh, okay. You just cover the shipping and I will send them to you, not that, an issue. That sounds like a good deal. I think it'd be fun to have a, an NC communal down here. Now, if you'd like to hear the entire podcast, I will be sure to link it at the end of this video. But she sent me a communal in the mail and they just arrived today. There's probably about 15 or 16 Nia Hatheli NCs in here. Uh, looks like there's some adults, some juvies. I even think I saw a little spiderling walking around. Now, before we go any further, I want to take a second and thank the sponsor of today's video, and that is microwilderness.com. No more do you have to drive to your local reptile expo, stand in line, pay admission, just to get inside to buy some new tarantulas. You can head over to microwilderness.com, where they have a huge selection of tarantulas, from spiderlings, juveniles to adults, as well as other true spiders and invertebrates. Everything can be shipped directly to you any in the United States through FedEx overnight delivery. They even offer a really good live arrival guarantee so you can buy with confidence. Wilderness Nate and the gang over at Micro Wilderness have really made a name for themselves in the hobby as being a reliable and reputable tarantula dealer. And if you use the code TTC10 at checkout, you're gonna save an additional 10% off of their already low prices. So head over to microwilderness.com, get yourself some new tarantulas, and tell Wilderness Nate that the Tarantula Collective sent you. Now I gave her a call, we talked on the phone for a little bit. I really wanted to pick her brain to figure out what type of enclosure I should use. Because searching on Google, you see amongst the people who do keep them communally, there's still some conflict as to how best to set them up. Some suggest they need to be kind of kept compactly in a small enclosure. That way they don't get territorial and fight. Others say they need a large enclosure so they have plenty of room to spread out. So I went straight to the source and talked to Dr. Rayer and she suggested that I put them all in one large enclosure and keep them similarly to how she has her enclosure set up. She provides plenty of hides as well as a lot of vertical cork bark. So they have plenty of anchor points for webbing their tunnels. But we'll get more into that in a second. Right now, we're gonna set up this enclosure and get these spiders moved into their new home. Now I'm using a large Exoterra 18 by 18 by 24 enclosure. I'm gonna set it up semi-arborally so they do have plenty of substrate to burrow, but there's gonna be a whole lot of room for them to web up and kind of give each other space. And to take things up a notch, I'm gonna set it up bioactively as well. That wasn't really my intention from the beginning, but I had a whole bunch of like half empty bags of substrate. I had half of a large bag of reptosoil. I had some jungle mix and I had some bio dude Terra Sahara substrate. There's no rhyme or reason to it. I didn't, I didn't do this intentionally. I'm not suggesting this is the best substrate for this species. It's literally just the open bags I had laying around that filled up the enclosure. But since I'm using that bio dude substrate, I mean, it's dirt, but it isn't dirt cheap. Huh? Huh? Ah, what do you know? It's a bioactive substrate and I didn't want to waste it. So I threw in some springtails and some dwarf isopods and took some clippings from the plants in my other bioactive enclosures to plant. And hopefully this is going to be a beautiful setup. Now, luckily I just got in a large bulk shipment of cork bark. And if you want to see where I got it from, I'll link that video up above. So we're going to go ahead and put in all of the different cork bark and wood and get the plants planted. Then after that, we'll move in the spiders. Now what I did is I took those large cork bark rounds that I, I 
got a few days ago and I've cut them up into small little pieces. Uh, Dr. Rayer suggested coconut shells make great hides for them, but I, I didn't have any. I used the last ones I had in my dart frog enclosure. But the concept's the same. They, they're nice little places for them to go in, web up, hide, and kind of separate. So we're gonna lay those out in the enclosure. I got some large, tall pieces that we're gonna put along the side. So there's gonna be plenty of places for them to anchor their webbing and hide and retreat. And it's, it's I think it's gonna look cool. So to start off, I'm putting all of the, the long, tall pieces in, the large pieces first. And this is a front opening enclosure, so I don't wanna get them too close to the door because I don't want them to web the door shut. Now I might actually get a couple more tall pieces because that really doesn't provide as much cover as I thought, but I got another couple pieces of wood too. So for right now we're gonna add some of these other like uh, kind of hide type pieces. Of course, it wouldn't be a tarantula collective enclosure without a skull. All right, I think that looks pretty good. They got plenty of places to hide, plenty of web anchors. I guess now it's time to get the plants in. Now, as you can see, this is just kind of a hodgepodge of plants. We've got some uh, different types of pothos that I pulled out of a few enclosures. I'm not even sure what these plants are. They're in my uh, leopard geckos enclosure. And we got some wandering Jew. I'm sure there's a scientific name that's not nearly as offensive, but I don't know what it is. I'll, I'll put it down below. Now, these are nice because they're gonna grow and wrap around stuff, give them even more places to hide and more places to uh, anchor their webbing. Now we got all the plants in, I'm gonna do a little bit more decorating, we'll add some like just different leaves. And that actually has two purposes. One, it, it looks cool, it gives it more of a natural appearance, but it's also food and shelter for the isopods and the springtails that are in there. Oh, but before I do that, I've got this, I've been putting this, it's called Stone Deserts by Exoterra. Uh, it's mainly for like scorpions and, and desert reptiles, but I, I sprinkle some of my enclosures on the top and it, it really kind of looks cool. sphagnum moss. I just like to shred it up, break it all over there. And I use both the white and the green kind. I also like to shove it in any cracks or crevices. Just gives a more natural kind of look. And just mix it up a little bit with the substrates. And now I'll put in some leaves. I feel like that's looking pretty good. I think we're about ready to move in these spiders.
all the plants are watered, everything is set up, I put the lid on the enclosure, the only things left to do is to move these spiders in. Now you may be nervous, I'm a little nervous, but Dr. Rayer assures me that this is gonna work well, and these are all from communals that are like multi-generational. So their whole life, they've known nothing but living communally. So maybe the fact that it's generation after generation after generation of being kept communally, maybe they'll be more adapted to surviving in this type of enclosure, and, and hopefully it goes really well. So we're gonna count how many we have, get them set up in here, and I'll keep you updated as time goes by. You know, just kind of let you know how the communal's going, how everybody's doing. But if it works out anywhere near as well as Dr. Rayer's enclosure, probably gonna end up having tons of these in no time soon. So let's check out these beautiful tarantulas. Get them moved into this nice new home. Up first, this is uh, just says five or six Neo from another group plus one young baby. Oh wow, they've already started webbing up this little deli go. Far, I don't see anyone. I mean, I can't, I'm not right on top at least. I can see him like in through the sides and stuff. So that's one down. See another big one right up here. Let's see if we can get it to come on in. So we've got three in so far. I just found the fourth one. All right, I found the fifth one and the little spiderling. Oh, wow, that one's big. That is cool. <laughs> Definitely gonna get a picture of that. So far we've got five, two that are solid adults at least, and one little spiderling. Now this one says eight, and they all look to be pretty good size. They're dwarf species, so they're not very big. This enclosure has given them more than enough room. I think they're gonna be really happy in here. The difficulty with rehousing communals is that there's so many of them, you gotta have the doors open to get them in. So not only are you watching the spiders that you're moving out of the deli cups into the enclosure, but you also have to keep an eye out for all the spiders that are already in the enclosure that may try to come out the front door. And this is, they've already webbed this thing up. Shut, there's one right up on top. So I'm gonna try and get this lid opened. Oh, it also looks like it molted not too long ago. Look at that beauty. So we'll go ahead and get that one moved in. Gotta be very thorough, make sure nobody's hiding these paper towels. Now I see two right next to each other. Look at that, they're like, they're cuddling. Now these are actually both color forms. It looks like there's the normal color form and the gold color form, which is pretty impressive. And it's on me. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got you. Oh, what were you doing? You're not escaping me. Let's get you back in your home. So a huge thanks to Dr. Linda Rayer from Cornell University for sending me all of these spiders. And I will keep you all updated on how this communal progresses. I'm gonna give it a few days for everyone to settle in, start webbing things up and take some more video. Cause I really have high hopes this is gonna work out well and it's just gonna look amazing. Now, if you wanna listen to the conversation where we really dive deep talking about social spiders and communal tarantulas, just click this thumbnail right here. And if you wanna see my other videos about communal tarantulas, just click this thumbnail right there. As always, I appreciate 
appreciate you watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Like this video if you like communal species, and I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs>